this little lip is noticeable on track. Hello folks, welcome to NetCruiser RC. I've got some RC upgrades to talk to you about and I received some product from T-Bone Racing that I want to test. I've got some items for the Techno EB410, so let's check them out. Actually, I received quite a bit of product from T-Bone Racing that I will be making eventual more videos about for Armas and some of the other bashers that I have, but specifically for the first video, I want to test out and try out some of the new Techno EB410 parts because I do have a Techno EB410 and I do race it weekly. So this is actual shock cap guards, which they're little pieces of their special blend of plastic, nylon. It'll just protect the shock caps. Now I do need to clean this, but as you can see, it already has started to chip off the anodized aluminum on the, on the metal shock cap. So that is what will prevent that. And then if I didn't have the metal shock caps on, it should also add additional protection for your plastic shock caps from breaking them. Just working on part of the install and some of you may remember that when I did my aluminum shock caps, uh, I actually got some comments of, I think you forgot to move over the O-ring from the old caps. That is true. I completely forgot. There's rubber in here that I forgot to move over. This, this O-ring. That's in all the caps and I forgot to put it in my aluminum. So we're going to do that now while I'm working on, just, I just took them off. I refilled them with fresh oil. I'm going to re-bleed them. I'm going to reseal my shock caps and then I'm going to put on the shock cap T-bone protectors. And these are the pieces. Looks like there is some manufacturing flashing or some sort of, you know, each material is maybe a little bit unique. Where's the other one? Yeah, they have some manufacturing uh, molding marks, but they're more for protection than for looks. You know, both of these things are not necessarily going to improve the looks of your vehicle, but they are certainly going to improve the protection of it. And what these are doing is these are going to stop from damaging the shock caps. Like you see this one, you see this one's only had a couple of races on it and already the anodization has been scraped off the top. Uh, I'm going to get those on here in a second. I'm just rebuilding my shocks and then we'll get these new T-Bone racing parts installed on the buggy. I also just wanted to show that when you, when you do fill up your shocks and bleed them properly, as soon as I let out this screw, even though the shaft is all the way out, it'll start to spit up. Look at that. Look at the spittle coming out. And then as soon as you give it a little bit of pressure, should be wiping this up as I go but I'm demonstrating for you guys because I bled them twice in my last upgrades video and I didn't show any any oil coming out as I bled them and that is normal that is going to happen so you do want that to happen all right so now with my shocks rebuilt I'm just putting them back onto the tower and then putting these protector caps on the t-bones now these are non-symmetrical part so you see how it's got that little weird cutout on it and I've tried them both ways. It doesn't necessarily interfere any way. Like if I could put it on that way with the little cutout towards the inside, works fine. Put it on this side with the cutout towards the outside. And it also works fine. So I took a quick look on their website and they show it with the little cutout on the inside. So that's how I'll do it, but uh, yeah. That's how it is, and that's how much they cost, $8.99 on sale. The reason why it has that little cut it on it is purely so that you can get at your emulsion screw. Uh, it just has that little lip on it so that you can get in and under to get at the emulsion screw. That's all, that's why it's asymmetrical like that. And you just pop on your, your nut and screw it in. Now I did notice something on the other side when I installed it because it is kind of forcing this up and over the mount if you install it tight like that it'll bind up your suspension so be careful about that it's adding that extra level of so you got to run it a bit looser than you did before to make sure it's not going to bind because if you have that a couple of revolutions too tight it's not giving you the full you know it's it's getting stuck that happens either way if you go too tight, but it's it's a little bit more sensitive with these caps on. So I'm going to run them like an extra quarter turn looser than I would before. 
and that's it. Now we've got that extra protection on there. Part number 57028. Okay, let's get on to installing the skid plate. That'll be the next thing, because I will put this on and then I'll run a race day with it or a race evening and we'll see how it, uh, how it holds up. Now, I'm currently running a film-based chassis skid, which is uh, J Concepts, and it's just a, uh, it's a very thin piece of like sticky Delrin, I would call it to be. And, you know, it started to wear out. Now, the one thing I do like about this is that it's clear. So I was able to put my positioning underneath it because the problem that you run into with the EB410 is you tend to get marshaled backwards because people see you like this and they think that's the front and that's the rear and this is the front on this car. So um, that is one thing is that when this skid goes on, you know, if you want any kind of marking, you would have to design your own. T-Bone also has a vinyl cover that they make where you could stick over a vinyl overlay that has their branding on it. But even with that, it has the text running this way. So it doesn't necessarily show you that this is the front where it has four screws, two hold it in the front and two hold it in the back. And so that would replace these, these two up here and these two back here, and then all of the rest of them are under the cover. If you need to service something from underneath with this, you could just unbolt it, four screws unbolt it, take it off, service it, and then put it back. So I like that it is completely reusable. It's pretty thin. I don't know how many millimeters that is. What would you guess? Yeah, it's one and a half millimeters thick. And it weighs about 85 grams, which that is fairly hefty for a chassis protector, but uh, you know, it's got the it's got the bend in it. It is wider in the rear than, than the actual chassis is. So when you install it, that's how it's gonna, ooh, that looks kind of cool actually, except for it picks up greasy, shocky fingerprints. Anyway, um, you see how much wider that is than the stock piece. It basically covers out all the way to where the droop screw molds are. I pop these screws out and install the new ones that it comes with because it does come with longer screws. And ooh, why is there five screws? Well, there's a center screw as well. Okay. If you ever want to remove a screw without taking off your full chassis protector, what I do is I just score it with an X-Acto knife or a hobby knife in an X pattern. And then you can get your Allen key in there and remove the screw. Okay, so there's the stock screws. So those are the new ones and those are the old ones. So that's what we'll do. We're now ready for installation. All I have to do is screw it on, but uh, I want to show you about the screws because the screws kind of make me a bit nervous. Here's the stock rears and here's the new T-bone rears. And here's the stock fronts and the front T and the T-bone fronts. Those ones aren't too bad. This, this is like five mil plus extra. That makes me nervous, especially because here they're saying not responsible for any damage. Check mounting screw lengths before threading in the car. Length could be wrong. Some brands use very coarse thread screw for their vehicles. When, since we don't carry those, we typically, we will not include longer screws. Well, you did this time and the thread looks the same. Looks like it's an M4 type thread. So, I feel confident in the fronts, but I'm going to be very careful about the rear because it is screwing into the rear bulkhead and it's going to be going way deep in there if I use all that thread. So we'll see. I mean, I'll, I'll start, but if I get, if it gets really hard and I get nervous about it, I will not. And then I don't know what to do about this. Um, I didn't really want to try and dig out that middle screw because I don't necessarily know exactly where it is. I guess I could try. I could just mark it. Yeah, I could do that. I'll just mark it with a little marker. Okay, I got to dig that screw out. Since I compared all the others, uh, this is the original center screw and here's the new center screw. Again, that one's not too bad. The only one that makes me really nervous is these rears. Holy cow, look at the size of those rears. Man. All right, we'll do it. And weirdly, I don't know why the middle one is not countersunk like the rest. Like, why? 
Why is the middle one not countersunk? Because that's not going to work. Then that's going to stick up like that. So that's some feedback that I have for them. I don't quite understand what that's about because I'm not going to leave it like that. Hmm. Man, that's a long screw. So that's going to go like that. I guess it's not too bad. Okay, I guess with all of those layers, can you see that? With all those layers, it's not too bad. All right, we'll do it. All right, so here's where we're at with it installed. And it looks pretty good, but because of the defect that I have, it's got a little bit of, I mean, you can see, you can see light right through it because it really does need that center screw. So I'm thinking, I mean, I don't know if I got this as a pre-production sample or not, so reserve judgment on that. Um, but I'm going to tell the company about this. So I think I'm going to make my own countersink because I just did a little test here. Like you can cut this stuff fairly easily. So I think I might just work my way and make my own countersunk hole and then I'll put the screw in um, before I test it because it'll kind of be unfair testing of me using it with that flopping around like that. So I will make my own countersunk hole and then do it right. And then we'll get it at the track and test it out. Something I want to show you, this stuff is flexible enough that I can just lift it. I still have the back connected. I can just lift it up like this to remove that screw. And I'm not worried about this breaking or snapping at all. That That is the benefit of the T-bone material is that it is, it is extremely flexible and not brittle. So uh, yeah, that's good. So I'll service it like that. Okay, and there we have it about a minute later with some scratching. I uh, made my own countersunk hole. It's ugly, but it's mostly functional. So there we go. We'll be able to pop that down in there. Whoa, don't lose it. My middle screw installed. It certainly does fit a bit better. Um, there is still a little bit of a, a lip, a little bit of a lift in the rear. Not by much though. So much that you can't really see light through it anymore. At least not easily. Oh yeah, you can. Anyway. That type of stuff bugs you, you won't really like this part, but it does add protection to the aluminum. So if you're just looking for a big skid plate for doing some RC bashing, you know, that's what this is good for. Um, you know, I don't necessarily know that it's a good choice for competitive racing because like I said, it weighs 85 grams. That's a lot for a race car. You're trying to reduce weight on a race car, not add 85 grams. So uh, anyway, I will run a full race night with it and uh, show you how it holds up at the end of the night. Um, just one other thing to take note is that previously before I installed this I had no exposed screws and now I have five. One, two, three, four, five. So um, that is also one particular you know thing to think about when you are running this is that you still have some screws you would have to clean out when you want to service it whether if you have the full sticker they're all covered. I think I am more so leaning towards that I like the sticker type chassis protectors but I do quite like these things and I'll run these for a week or two and then we'll see how they hold up. I'm, I'll report back after one full night of racing. I just wanted to show one last minute addition I just made to the EB410 Techno chassis skid before I go race with it and that is indicate the orientation. Uh, silver Sharpie. Make whatever kind of artistic addition you want. So we'll see how well this holds up after a night of scraping on the track as well. Heading to the track right now. All right, I'm back from a very successful night of racing. I actually won in short course A main, and I came extremely close to winning in eight scale, but uh, I had a bobble at the very last lap, and I cut a corner, and so I slowed down, and I gave the other guy who was behind me the win. But that's what we're not here to talk about. We're here to talk about the Techno EB410 and the T-Bone racing parts. I'm gonna start with the good stuff first, which is these shock cap protectors, as well as they slightly protect the top of the shock tower too they did their job and they work very well so that's one night of racing you can see them scuffed up they absolutely do their job so it's going to save your aluminum shock caps or it's also going to save your plastic caps that's that mostly the chassis protector that's what I, we need to talk about the most and as you can see 
This is one evening of racing where so we did two qualifiers and a main. So 15 minutes of racing uh, on my local track, which is an outdoor clay track. There are, after running it for one night, I do have a couple of things of feedback about it. The skids are skidded up as expected, so I'm not too worried about that. But I got some opinions from the people that were at the track and they didn't necessarily like how, because of the center screw, it gives it that bow in the middle, which you maybe can't see on camera. But uh, yeah, it gives it a little bit of a, of a canoe look where it's sucked down in the middle. And many people were, were saying, you know, it'd be nice if they just hadn't included that and just gave you two big pieces of double-sided tape that were low profile. They could just stick it down on your chassis and then have your front and rears. As well as some people wondered, why did they not use four front screws and four rear screws? Um, you know, whatever. I think that two in the front and two in the rear is fine, but I do agree that having some double-sided tape in the middle might be a better option than installing the center screw because it does give it a little divot that uh, you may or may not be able to see. I think you could see it easier before I used it. Now it's somewhat evened out a bit. I will say that I did think that it was going to collect a lot of dust and dirt under it and, uh, you know, maybe we'd have to take it off in a few weeks to see, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It did not get all caked up here. Uh, as expected. But one thing that did happen that I was not necessarily expecting was that this little lip is noticeable on track. When you take a nose down jump or if you land a little bit incorrectly, having that one and a half millimeters to two millimeters that sticks down lower and is a blunt edge is noticeable. It will catch you out. Um, so I don't necessarily like that. I wish that it was a little bit round it off, which will happen as you run it, um, or that it had some sort of a taper to it. Maybe it's designed so that if you run their uh, thrasher bumper, it's not exposed like that, which could be the case. You know, I do not have their big thrasher bumper that comes out. I think that's more of a basher item, not really necessary to racing. The rear held up very well from a skid perspective. And I actually kind of like how it covers this extra area it goes right into the droop screws and covers that extra bit of the chassis and I had no problem with dirt collection or anything like that what I did have a problem with is interference I got to the track and I went to go throw it out to go do my first qualifier and I had everything was binding up and, I, and it took me quite a while to figure out what it was um, I had no rear like the rear kept grabbing and binding and I thought maybe I had blew up my center diff and I was having problems with that to make a long story short it turns out to be the screws that I was worried about remember how I said these rear screws were extra long yep look at that that's what was happening they're too long the screws that they provide are way too long and they get in here and they're interfering with the rear diff so that's terrible I mean I'm glad that I did not run a full race like that that was just on the bench I noticed it was binding and already look at the damage that it did to that screw head. So that also means that it grinded up against a bunch of stuff on the inside of my diff and now there's shrapnel in there. So man, that sucks. And I got to talk for a minute about their policy, which is that for you, the user are supposed to check screw mount lengths before installing the car. I disagree with this policy. I, what other product do you get? that includes installation screws, but says, oh, hold on guys, we might have sent you the wrong length or the wrong thread, and it's up to you to verify that it's the correct screw. People aren't gonna do that. I mean, unless it's blatantly obvious, it's not, it's not gonna work. They're going to use the screws that you provide them. So some feedback to T-Bone is that if you're gonna provide a kit, I would really like you to put in the extra due diligence to make sure that the screws that come with it are appropriate because that could have caused some serious damage to my car. And as you say here, you're not responsible for it. Length could be wrong. They acknowledge, that obviously they know that there's many of their kits that they just throw in whatever screws they had that are somewhat applicable. Don't do that. How many people are going to just install it and not know and then think that their car is broken or they're going to break their car even further by running a screw that is way too long? So I put the stock ones back in. If you're getting a screw to install a product, you want that screw to work. You do not want to have to be responsible for going to buy screws that work or having to get a tool and dremel them down. Like why, why? What other product do you get that does that? Nothing. Now that means that there are that two or three millimeters too shallow in the diff and I don't really like that either. So 
T-Bone, you make a really good product here. Your fastening hardware could use some work. And that was my experience of them when I, when I tested them five or six years ago on my Traxxas Summit. The actual skid product is excellent, but the mounting hardware is the problem. That still seems to be true to this day. Don't rely on the screws that they give you as just that it's going to work because they may have sent you a screw that's way too long or way too short or they even acknowledge in here that sometimes they substitute the thread type. Really can't recommend this for a racetrack. I, I don't think it's appropriate. I think a normal sticker type protection is better. I do really like those shock cap protectors though. I do like that. Those are definitely going to stay on this car. I like those a lot. I just can't recommend this one guys. Uh, but T-Bone makes lots of different products and I'm expecting that the Creighton one is going to be very good. I just don't think that this is appropriate for a racetrack. This is a basher product, definitely. Not a racer's product. So just be aware of that. Alright guys, so that's going to be it for this one. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button or if you learned something, a like rating would be excellent. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. If you want to buy something from T-Bone Racing, I will put links in the description of where you can get their products from. And as always, thanks for watching.